The next day, the birthday had already concluded. Diana had left that same night after tasting the cake, as she was in a hurry. Toka and Kurumi had also stayed to sleep, which could have caused a problem if Wiss hadn't found a solution. Thanks to his skills as an angel, he created a guest room for the spirits to sleep, including Hikari and Megumi. Now, the training for Mew to awaken her spirit powers would begin. Thus, the goddess of destruction sat in a lotus position under a tree, observed by the spirits. Seriously, do you just have to find yourself? That sounds like something from a manga, Kurumi said, arching an eyebrow. She had awakened her powers due to frustration, and the fear of losing her mother, while Toka felt desperate watching Goku being beaten without being able to do anything. That's how we did it, although there is another way. But I'm not sure if we can do it at this time, Hikari replied, directing his gaze towards the spirit of time. This answer aroused curiosity in Mew's sisters, but it was the youngest who voiced the doubt, why don't you know if it can be done? Is there an easier way to gain spirit powers? Toka asked, placing her hand on her chin thoughtfully. This time, Megumi answered, the reason is simple. Currently, the ruler of the kingdom of heaven is Gabriel, and he's not easy to persuade. However, in the future, the ruler of heaven is a more reasonable person, she said, emphasizing the point with her fingers. Toka and Kurumi were not entirely satisfied with the answer, but for the moment, they left it there, curious if their older sister could truly awaken her spirit powers. Meanwhile, Goku had gone to the western city to take a walk with Gohan and Mio. After their training, they wanted to have some fun and enjoy some ice cream. Of course, they had told Mew they were going for a walk, otherwise, the goddess of destruction would have tagged along. After finding an ice cream parlor, the trio finally settled in a square bustling with people, from youths chatting and drinking soda to children playing. Daddy, why does mom have to train with those two girls? Mio asked curiously before savoring her strawberry ice cream. Before Goku could answer, he noticed Gohan also wanted clarification. Isn't mom so strong that no one can defeat her except grandma, Gohan asked, a little confused. It was unusual for them to see their mother training, as she had focused on refining a technique not even mastered by other gods of destruction in recent years. Goku pondered for a moment, trying to find an appropriate response for his children, given their lack of knowledge about the future. Well, ah, huh, what happens is that your grandmother sensed a potential four spirit powers in Mew, and she wants to learn how to use them. Yes, that's it. The Saiyan answered, a little uncertain, before savoring his chocolate and strawberry ice cream. Gohan and Mio exchanged uncertain glances, aware that their father wasn't adept at lying. However, it was the little girl who delved further into the matter. Just seconds after she began questioning her father, a tremendous explosion rocked the area, wreaking havoc on much of the city. Fortunately, Goku reacted swiftly, shielding his children from the impact. Not only that, but he also erected a barrier to protect the people in the square. Nonetheless, he couldn't do much more, as everything had transpired too rapidly. As the dust settled, the Saiyan noticed a peculiar bluish being with a malevolent grin on its face. Could this be one of those androids? He pondered, taken aback by the absence of any energy emanating from the creature. With a stern expression, he advanced toward the entity. The words you are forbidden to meddle in trivial affairs that others can handle reverberated in Goku's mind. Words that Mew had uttered days earlier. Possessing immense power meant that resolving Earth's problems might encourage others to relax and leave everything to the Saiyan. Tisk. Goku grumbled under his breath, acknowledging Mew's point. However, should he allow this entity to ravage everything he cherished until others arrived? The android locked eyes with the Saiyan and swiftly conducted a facial scan. 100% confirmed, Son Goku, the android announced before launching itself toward Goku without hesitation. Meanwhile, atop a building, Dr. Garo observed this project, a fusion of androids dubbed Super Android N13, with surprise. Spotting none other than Son Goku, he chose not to intervene for the time being, considering this android a mere trial for his ultimate plans. In the square, Goku effortlessly thwarted the android strike, and discreetly exerted a little key to force it back. He calculated every move to ensure Mew wouldn't suspect him of using his powers. However, his attention was diverted when he heard his daughter Mio's anguished cries. Gohan attempted to console her, but it was futile. Mio wept as her ice cream lay in ruins on the ground. Amid her tears, she glanced up, her eyes no longer a light blue, now blazing red with fury. You! she exclaimed, pointing at the android, her teeth clenched, while a light of some sort began emanating from her chest, gradually enveloping her. On Mount Peozu, Megumi, 
and Hikari felt the disturbance, their eyes widening in astonishment as they exchanged concerned glances. It's mom, they whispered in unison. For some inexplicable reason, Mew rose with a grave expression, only to be halted by Toka, whose body moved instinctively. She knew her sister was about to charge after the android. Arara, this is an unexpected turn of events. I wonder what could have transpired for little Mio to undergo such a transformation, Kurumi remarked, a wry smile playing on her lips, acknowledging the unforeseen development. Back in the western city, Goku observed the changes in his young daughter, as did Gohan, and even the android. Mio no longer wore the attire she had minutes before. Instead, she donned a white dress adorned with golden details, slightly revealing with a small neckline. Her knee-high boots and elbow-length gloves matched the white and gold theme. Additionally, her hair appeared to have grown, now extending to her knees, and with a slightly darker, silver hue instead of its previous white shade. Mio, Gohan whispered, standing beside her, have you become a spirit? He pondered silently. In a flash, Mio materialized behind the android, clutching one of its not attached arms. Hum it seems you're nothing more than a worthless piece of scrap, Mio declared, her voice laced with authority and seriousness. Goku swiftly turned towards the android as he heard his daughter's voice, catching sight of her standing behind the mechanical being, holding its severed arm. I couldn't even follow her movements, he thought. Astonished by his daughter's agility, the android reacted swiftly, launching a barrage of key balls at Mio, who countered by conjuring an earthen barrier that absorbed the impact. Has she defeated it? Dr. Jero wondered from a safe distance, his curiosity piqued. Seconds later, as the earthen barrier dissipated, Mio stood unscathed. I see you can destroy an ice cream comma, but you can't lay a scratch on me. She taunted the android, her gaze unwavering. Her words seemed to affect the android, which promptly launched a rapid assault of punches and kicks. To everyone's surprise, Mio effortlessly dodged each strike. After a mere three minutes, Mio, still clutching the android's arm, tossed it at the machine, piercing its head. Tisk, my hand slipped on its own, she remarked watching the android collapse to the ground, incapacitated. Damn! Dr. Jero exclaimed before promptly leaving the scene. Meanwhile, Goku approached his daughter, thoroughly impressed. He briefly entertained the idea of her utilizing Ultra Instinct, but dismissed the thought, reminding himself that she was still just a little girl. Mio, you left me impressed. Is this the power of your spirit? Goku inquired, a smile gracing his face. His question captured his daughter's attention prompting her to return a faint smile before collapsing unconscious on the ground. The Saiyan swiftly scooped her up into his arms, observing her hair gradually reverting to its original white hue. Her dress dissipated in a soft light, revealing the clothes she had been wearing before. This is just like what happened with Toka, Goku recalled, reminiscing about the redhead's transformation into a spirit during her battle against Black. Goku shattered the protective barrier, prompting the grateful crowd to express their thanks for his intervention. This touched the Saiyan, albeit it also saddened him. Luckily, there were no casualties. Turning to his son, who still appeared dazed, Goku inquired, Well, Gohan, are you okay? Gohan met his father's gaze, blinking several times. Mio is incredibly strong. I need to train even harder from now on, he declared, resolve etched into his voice. Ha ha ha, well said, son. I'll do the same, Goku replied, rising to his feet to head back home after the intense encounter. Gohan walked alongside him. Later that night, Megumi and Hikari sat on a tree branch, gazing at the moon. Sister, do you think this will have altered something in our time? The younger one asked with curiosity. Megumi remained silent for a few moments, contemplating the moonlight. It seems that, for the time being, we will still be conceived. Otherwise, we would vanish without a trace, and everyone would forget about us. The elder sister responded gravely, her gaze shifting to her sibling. Hikari rest assured, there will be changes in our time. After all, mom awakened her spirit powers during the tournament of power in the twelve universes, she added, a small smile gracing her lips, dispelling any doubt within her sister.